Welcome to The Point. I'm your host, Anna Kasparian, and we have a freaking excellent show ahead for you guys. We have some substantive topics that will definitely provoke a serious conversation. But honestly, my favorite story of the day has to do with Molly, MDMA, the drug of choice for ravers. We're going to give you a little lesson on that. But before we get to that fun topic, we're going to talk about more police brutality in New York City. Definitely unfortunate, and this time they targeted a grandmother. We're also going to talk about Donald Trump's absolute ignorance and stupidity. And also, teens are getting lit, but not in a fun way. I'll give you more on that. And also, Ryan Gosling's terrible, terrible emotional breakdown. What did he get so sad about? And finally, kids are being dressed up in Hooters outfits. Why is that happening, and why do we allow it? All of that and more, but before we get to all of it, of course you got to meet our panelists. I'm really excited because for the last two weeks, we've had an all-women's panel, but now we're bringing in the male perspective, the young male perspective. Yeah. We're going to start sort off with of. Robbie Motts, who's freaking awesome. He's the host of Equals 3 on YouTube. Robbie, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, it's your first time on the show, so I hope we don't scare you away. Oh, a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> all right. Hopefully I'll come back. And we have a returning guest, Andy Reesmeyer. He is the host of Dweebcast on Aura TV. Mm -hmm. Thank all you right. for me. You're looking good without the glasses today. Thank you, I know. I'm really trying, trying <laughs> to step handsome. up the, uh, <laughs> the look. I love it, I love it. All right, so let's start off with probably the most serious story of the day. New York Police Department officials are getting a little bit of heat after they literally dragged a 48-year-old woman out of her home because they happened to get the wrong apartment when they were trying to respond to a domestic disturbance. Now, what made this story particularly interesting was the fact that she was naked when she was dragged out of her apartment. She was wearing only a towel, and after they took her out, um, the towel fell off, and she was laying there with nothing but her underwear on for about two minutes. Now, there were 12 cops that showed up to the apartment. Again, they showed up to the wrong apartment, and they said that they were responding to a domestic disturbance. Now, uh, we do have a video that was taken taken by a neighbor uh, on the scene. Let's take a quick look at that and I'll give you more details. It's a woman. It's a female. With a female cop. That's a female. That's a female. Now you can hear one of the neighbors screaming, um, you know, be careful, she has asthma. And if you guys know anything about the New York Police Department, they've been getting a lot of criticism because recently uh, a man died after one police official put him in a headlock. He also had asthma. And it's amazing that that story didn't teach them any lessons. Now this, I should say, happened before the incident that I just described now. But the New York uh, Police Department has been dealing with excessive force claims. They've been dealing with a lot of really huge criticisms and backlash and what's fascinating about this is the police are saying that the 12 year old girl that they found in the apartment was abused and she had bruises on her face but then they went ahead and arrested her so it's really interesting that they went ahead and arrested the person that they were there to protect now there are very few details on this story who knows how it's gonna play out but I do want to know what our panelists think about it if you answer the door without any clothes on doesn't matter who's banging on the door you're really setting the tone mm -hmm. and while the NYPD clearly is dealing with excessive force claims. I think the onus can be on the family when you see how they reacted and how this escalated. Uh, NYPD, police, anybody, they're always going to have, um, I think, the propensity or the, the potential to escalate a situation. And if you go in there and you're freaking out and you're making this crazy scenario happen, they're going to go right along with you. All right, fair enough. I don't know if I agree with that, but I'll make my point in a second. Okay. First, let me give Robbie a yeah, chance to chime uh, you know, in. I, I would say that I would... Yeah, I mean, that woman looked, to me, kind of terrified. I mean, there were, what, like six police officers there? There were 12. I mean, th 12. Mm -hmm. There were 12 police officers there on the scene for, what was it, a dis domestic dispute There was or a like domestic uh, disturbance. Now, again, the cops showed up to the wrong apartment. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this woman probably had, I mean, her privacy was invaded. She was pulled out from taking a shower. And then there's 12 men right there all like yelling and there's a commotion. I mean like at, at that point, how much calm can you really 
retain. Yeah. My argument is, if you are a professional police official, it is your job to de-escalate situations like that. It is not your job to escalate the situation. So if 12 cops show up to my apartment while I'm wearing nothing but a towel, and they say, hey, we, we need to come in and investigate, I would be like, why? There's nothing going on, everything's fine. I'm not gonna let you come into my home. And so I, I think that she had all the right in the world to say, no, you can't come into my home. That pissed the cops off because they have an ego and they don't like to be questioned. Authority never likes to be questioned. And that's why it escalated to the situation. If I were the cops, I would find another way to handle it, right? And, and unfortunately, I don't think the cops are trained enough at this point to deal with situations like this. They just get mad when their ego gets bruised and it turns into excessive force. All right, okay. Yeah. Well, there was a little bit of a disagreement, but that's good, that's good. That's what we do on the show. <laughs> now here's the personal question related to the story. What would you do if cops accused you of something but you were innocent. I'm gonna start with you, Robbie. So I would like to think that I would very naturally retain my calm, you know, and keep my composure and say like, okay, yeah, sure, let's go downtown, book me, whatever, I'll call my lawyer. <laughs> like, yeah, I know that you're in the wrong, but I would like to think that I would be able to keep my composure. Mm -hmm. But that's future Robbie. I don't know what future Robbie's actually gonna be like. Future Robbie might be really mad. Yeah. Future Robbie might not be, like he might be on his way to something really important and doesn't want to be detained. Or future Robbie might just, I don't know, that day might be a bad day for him. And I future don't Future Robbie is such an enigma. I you know, know, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds very right? dangerous. Crazy. <laughs> um, but I mean like that's, I don't know how I would react. I've never been put in that situation where I'm immediately put on the defensive by someone with that much authority. Right. Um, I don't know how I would react to that. Fair I enough. would like to think calmly, nicely, but. Andy, what about you? I got arrested uh, about two years ago. Uh, I, got, I got pulled over in West Hollywood. I was driving home from Cabin in the Woods, mm -hmm. one of the best movies, one of the worst nights of my life. Um, I got pulled over. I don't know why, I had Indiana plates on my car, it's kind of what I think. The LAPD went nuts. They said, you're drunk. I was like, I promise you, I'm not. I did the breathalyzer thing and I tried to do all that. I blew zeros and I did the whole field sobriety. They didn't know what to do, so they said, hey, let's get somebody else down here. Pulled a drug enforcer down. Shut up. Decided that I was uh, under the influence of marijuana, was not. Hand to God, I was 100% sober. You know. But you're not black. I, I, that's <laughs> what no, I was telling him. And the reason why I say that is because usually when cops want to get someone and they really go out of their way like that, it's usually a person of color. Let's I, keep it real. I used to be the person who said, cops are wonderful, they know what they're doing, they're just trying to serve and protect, and now I absolutely, after spending 14 hours in the Hollywood jail for doing absolutely nothing, wow. uh, I totally, totally, even though what I said about you know escalating a situation, understand exactly how this family feels, and especially if it's something where maybe they ha obviously if, you know if the kid was, was pulled away and they arrested the people in the house for abusing the child, there's clearly something going on wrong in the house. You know, there's something happening there, uh, a, a, a high tense environment, right? Mm -hmm. High tensity environment, and it's, it's like the cops. They don't care. They'll just do whatever they want to do. And they decided that night that I wanted to be in jail. So or, what was the outcome? Did you end up so fine? So I had to hire an attorney. Okay. They dropped, when the drug test came back negative, they dropped that charge. And then I got charged with a misdemeanor driving in California with an Indiana license. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks, guys. Uh, That's all in amazing. All, they I'm glad that. that my tax dollars are going oh, toward right? catching crazy criminals like you. <laughs> God, I wow. have two dangerous wow, dudes man. on the show You better today. watch out. I know, Ooh. I know. Um, wow, I have been really lucky. I've never been arrested. I've never dealt with um, cops accusing me of doing something that I haven't done. I've actually been really, really lucky with cops, and I think that it's a combination of my white privilege and the fact that I'm a female. Let's keep it real. Well, I'm a white I'm privileged female as well, and it didn't help me out at all. <laughs> it didn't so. help you. It didn't help you. No, Rachel in my Maddow, case, out. I feel like I've been, I've been pulled over for speeding way too many times. Not lately, because I got a hybrid and I kind of got my speeding under control. <laughs> right, okay. um, but, uh, <laughs> but like, white privilege is off the charts right now. <laughs> but, my, but in my situation, cops will be like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I'll be like, I don't know, officer. What was I doing? <laughs> and then they'll say, you were speeding. And I'll be like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm so sorry. 
and then they don't give me a ticket. You cry? Oh. I've cried once, and that was when the cop did give me a ticket. Yeah, well. Yeah. Oh. But I've, I've, I haven't been accused of doing something illegal. Uh, but if I were in that situation, I would obviously hire an attorney, and I'm in a good position where I have those resources available to me. What do you guys think, though? What would you do if a cop accused you of doing something and you were completely innocent? And also, what do you make of this NYPD story? Do you feel that the cops have the uh, responsibility to de-escalate de the situation, or do you think that the woman is at fault here? T share your comments in the section below. We will see you soon with another clip. There has been a huge Ebola outbreak in West Africa, and everyone has been fear-mongering about it. One of those individuals is Donald Trump, who, of course, is one of the more ignorant people on the planet. <laughs> now, uh, to give you some more stats and some more information on what's happening, the World Health Organization says, and they announced this week, that the death toll has increased significantly from 729 to 887 deaths in uh, Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Nigeria. Unfortunately, there was an American doctor that was affected by this uh, outbreak. His name is Dr. Kent Brantley, and uh, they brought him back to the United States in order to get treatment. This is something that Donald Trump is not too happy about, and he wrote about it in a series of tweets because that's what classy people do. They express their feelings about something as serious as an Ebola outbreak on Twitter. Let me give you an example of some of the shit he wrote. He said, the U.S. cannot allow infected people back. People that go too far away places to help out are great, but must suffer the consequences. Oh, that's great. So we have an American doctor who just went to another country to help people out. He must suffer the consequences to that, of that. Uh, the next tweet was, the U.S. must immediately stop all flights from Ebola-infected countries or the plague will start and spread inside our borders. I don't know why borders is... In quotes. Yeah, it's he's an idiot. Borders, yeah. yeah, he's an idiot. Uh, act fast. <laughs> and then finally, the fact that we're taking the Ebola patients while others from the area are fleeing to the United States is absolutely crazy. Stupid polls. I have a lot to say about this, but I want to give you guys a chance to chime in. Robbie, let me start off with you. You know, I don't know why he even is listened to, uh, actually at all. Like, why mm -hmm. is he, what role does he have to actually even be commenting on this stuff in the first place? I think it's just ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I mean, to, to deny someone's re-entrance into the United States at all, I think, is like over being infected with an Ebola uh, virus, yes. we ha he has no knowledge on whether or not that's actually going to spread out. He's acting purely on the fear that it will. Absolutely. And he says it, and therefore more people will start to believe it and will jump on that bandwagon without actually knowing what you know how that situation would actually be handled. Exactly. So. Andy? Yeah, you can't take him seriously. He's like the closest thing we have to a real life supervillain, which quite <laughs> honestly, if, if you think about it, the business of Donald Trump is talking about Donald Trump. So in reality, it's working. Like, he can go out there and say a bunch of crazy, ludicrous shit, but of course we're going to start talking about it, and that's what he wants. He wants relevance, and so <laughs> hats off to you, Donald, yeah. your moronic stupidity. Yeah, look, we have a ban on Donald Trump here at TYT Network, Apparently but every not. once in a while it, it's important to cover something he says because it's actually representative of what a lot of people think. Well, people are actually, a lot of people yeah. are ignorant about Ebola. They think that it just spreads by someone like breathing in the same room as you. A lot of times Ebola uh, patients are quarantined. Uh, usually you will get the disease through bodily fluids. I mean, he's not educated on it. And if he's really worried about a disease spreading, I mean, he should really consider leaving America because I'm worried about his disease spreading, the disease of fucking stupidity. Get the fuck out of the country. I think that you're the most unpatriotic, most idiotic person in this country. All right, so the question related to this story is, have you ever tried to do good for someone only to experience <clears throat> backlash and had to suffer the consequences for your good deed? I'm gonna start off with you, Robbie. Uh, yeah, this actually happened uh, when the Equals 3 announcement was first happening. Variety had leaked uh, that I was gonna be the new host on the show and- Get it. Uh, yeah, well, thank <laughs> you. Uh, but, you know, I, and I was getting all this attention suddenly and people were, uh, wondering because there's a delay in our first episode and they were like when's the episode gonna come out and they're freaking out um, So I wanted to respond to that. It wasn't in my place to respond to that I shouldn't have been the one to do it, but I did um, And as soon as I did people start saying he confirmed the leak he confirmed the leak Oh my god, and it started spreading everywhere, and I freaked out. I was like, oh my god I thought I had actually just lost this opportunity in mm. a way so I called Ray um, And we talked and he was like dude, it's fine don't yeah. worry. It's yeah. you know it'll get handled. We'll deal with it, and you know the episode will come out soon enough. But I, for a moment, for well more than a moment, thought that I had just lost the 
the biggest Your opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I wanted to, I guess, tell these people what was going on it's when it right, wasn't my man. place to do. You know, it happens. It happens. Sometimes so. we say things and do things in in social media that we shouldn't say and do. Yes, really. I, I know that. So no. yeah. <laughs> I'm a example of that. Um, Andy, what do you think? I try not to do nice things for people for mm -hmm. this very reason. Good idea, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Being a narcissist protects me, believe it or not, from a lot of things like emotions and responsibilities and They're obligations. They're confusing, right? So it, it's Ugh. just, for me, this is a better place for me to just say, you know, let somebody else handle it. So, no, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm living a great life. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Great answer. Um, something happened fairly recently. One of my friends uh, saw a guy at a club that she wanted me to, like, talk to for her. And I had no interest in the guy, like not at all. And I went up to him and basically told him like, hey, you know, my friend, he, she's into you. And as I was telling him that, he was drunk. I was also drunk, let's keep it real. And um, he like grabbed me and said something along the lines of, but I want you. And then he like went in for a kiss. And so that totally backfired. My friend yeah. was upset. I, I feel like we never really had a conversation about it, but there was like a little bit of awkward tension. And thankfully, that's kind of dissolved. <laughs> Good but thing then, the whole world doesn't know about it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Um, but I think the best way, look, you never know. You never know. When people are drunk, they do stupid things, right? right. So like, I think that it, it speaks volumes when you just go up to a guy that you want, and you're like, boom, I like you. Because yeah, why, why didn't you just? She's fucking hot too. She's yeah. like the hottest girl She's I know. She's wearing the pants. Anyway, anyway. She needs to. Uh, so, so anyway, um, yeah. So that happened. Tell us what you guys think, though. Uh, have you ever had a good deed backfire? And also, what do you make of Donald Trump's comments on Ebola? Do you think that he might have a good point? Have you fallen victim to the fear mongering? Share your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section below. We'll see you guys soon. Some teenagers are taking getting lit a little too far and they're literally lighting <laughs> themselves on fire for YouTube celebrity, which is so unbelievably sad and pathetic. People are actually getting harmed in the process of doing so. You know why? Because they're lit lighting themselves on fire. You shouldn't do that. Um, but we do have a few examples for you. Maybe you're into it. Maybe it turns you on. Maybe you're a pyromaniac. I don't know. Take a quick look. Let's try it again with nail polish removal. obviously ended up in emergency rooms after they've attempt attempted this stunt. Uh, there was one uh, kid in New York who actually tried this and he suffered from severe burns and one of the things that he told officials was, you know, it sucks because you don't really see the aftermath of this stunt in those YouTube videos. And then he was asked, well, what did you think was going to happen? And he was like, I don't know, I didn't really think about it. That's pretty clear. <laughs> so, Andy, make your point. I I cannot stress this enough to the children of the world. You have the easiest fucking existence in the history of the planet. Yes. You have no responsibilities. You have absolutely no one telling you what to do. Your whole life is in a two and a half meter thick device called a phone. Don't fucking set yourself on fire. Why? It's so stupid. <laughs> it, make, it makes my heart hurt. Yeah, I gotta say, on the top list of things that you should never do mm -hmm. ever, Setting yourself on fire is pretty high up there. I mean, like, I, that's got to be kind of the, the epitome of stupidity, if I'm going to rhyme there. Yes. Um, but I, I just, I think to get views, to be, you know, welcomed and by your peers as, like, as cool as, like, I'm not sure what, what the point is here. You yeah. Know, like, I, oh, you know, I was brave enough to light my body on fire. I um, think that it's indicative of what teenagers are obsessed with these days. And in some of those you know, clips, they weren't even teenagers, they looked like they were in their 20s. But people are so obsessed with celebrities and getting likes in social media, getting comments in social media, having some sort of virtual celebrity tied to their name, that they're literally willing to do things that put themselves in great danger. And it's, it's scary and it makes me worry about what the world is gonna be like when I have kids, when my kids are teenagers, <laughs> how are they gonna react to the internet and whatever new technology is gonna be out there. I'm gonna wanna lock them 
them up in a basement. You know, that's just without a camera. Hopefully, know? hopefully my kids will be smart, and hopefully I'll be that. a good parent that that teaches them right from wrong. But anyway, uh, here's a question: Would you rather light yourself on fire on camera, or would you rather get your entire body waxed on camera? Um, Andy, I want to start off with you. I don't know why. Uh, isn't that that should for everybody just get your body waxed? There's no like irreparable harm that can come from getting your body waxed, yeah. as far as I know, right? It's just gonna hurt a little bit, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, lighting yourself on fire. It's like, can't we go back <laughs> to the old days when like you could just light your neighbor's cats on fire? Or you know, remember you that? Knew that fire was bad and yeah, hot. What? Don't touch. You know. You know, what? I'm gonna switch up this question. I have another question. Um, so. Is there any type of pain that you actually enjoy, mm. Andy? Um, heartbreak. You enjoy heartbreak? No, I don't know. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I have no idea. I, really, I, I am, um, no. Pain yeah. sucks, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I, I know that like, it's like there's a sexual connotation a lot of times with it, and people get off on that. Yes. But like, um, again, with the whole idea that we are in the future, Let's let's be gluttons. Let's enjoy ourselves. You know, right, let's okay. not let's not right. suffer. You like the gentle touch. <laughs> I like the gentle touch. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Cosmic lube. <laughs> All right, go ahead, yeah. Robbie. I gotta say, um, there's no pain that I like, of course, thoroughly enjoy. As uh -huh. I'm like, oh yeah, ah. Um, but I mean, I mean, when you're, I don't know, doing manual labor, when you're working hard, you know, working out, exercising, that oh. to me is, you know, like that. You are so good. What? You are so good. Yeah, that, was, that was like the perfect. Your parents light. are very oh proud of you right now. I'm like we see that pervy host trying to ask <laughs> a pervy question, you handled it remarkably. Well, yeah, all that's, you know, I, it's it's something that you know, without a little bit of pain, you know, the rest of the world just kind of gets, I don't know, um, kind of one tone, if that makes sense. You got to go through something. Tone. Beautiful. Well, okay. Beautiful. Sure. Such a poetic yeah. gentleman. Oh my gosh. Um, I yeah, I like You're pain. You're a better Pain's man than me. Um, in some instances. So like, if a dude like bites my lower lip as we're making out, like that, and I'm not talking about like whips and chains and crazy shit like that, but like just a little like chains. a little something to remind me that I have those nerve endings intact. Right. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. You want to feel. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The cold exterior. <laughs> oh my God. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear you guys answer this question. <laughs> Are you ever into any little bit of pain? Are you to a lot of pain and also what do you think about the fire challenge would you try this yourself if it meant that you would get millions of views on YouTube comment in the section below we'll see you guys soon Star Magazine isn't exactly where you want to go to get factual information on celebrities, but nonetheless, we're going to do a story that comes from Star Magazine. Ryan Gosling allegedly had an emotional breakdown after he had a one-night stand. At least that's according to uh, some woman that Star Magazine interviewed. And so uh, there's no way of knowing whether or not this is 100% true, but I think it's really fascinating and it might open up a really interesting conversation about sex, expectations, what we think about people that are very open with their sexuality. Now, one of uh, Star's sources said the following. Uh, let's take a quick look at the graphic. <laughs> he was the best lover I had, recalls the curvy blonde who shared a night of passion with Ryan after meeting him at a nightclub. But once the lovemaking was over, things took a turn. I thought I heard him sniffling, she says. Then I realized he had tears gushing down his face. I asked if he was all right, and he said he gets emotional sometimes. Okay, this story is not true. Okay, I think, I think that Ryan Gosling is the perfect person to, to choose for this type of bullshit story because he's looked upon as like the really sensitive guy, right? He has that persona. Right. And so it's probably not true, but nonetheless, I think it's interesting. Um, Robbie, what do you think? Make your point. You know, I love that that starts with, it was the best sex I've ever had. And then it goes into the rest of it, which, I mean, it just comes across as the soap opera. You know, yes. the entire uh, message that this woman's presenting. I think, I think, honestly, it's a little ridiculous mm -hmm. to even invest this much into a story like this. I think, yes. you know, why do people care that much? much you know like great point you don't know who this person was or what connection they might have had you know even if he did break down crying mm -hmm. maybe he like I don't know had allergies who knows you yeah. know it could have just been like a tear or something yeah but, um, I think it's so silly to fixate on something like this Andy it, just for the record um, you're, you're not supposed to cry after sex That's <laughs> 
Oh yeah, buddy. I mean, yeah. I mean, do you, boo? Do you? You want to get emotional? <laughs> let it out. Uh, well, everybody wants his haircut, right? Everybody brings in pictures of him whenever they get their haircut. So I've been told. Right. Uh, so why <laughs> wouldn't we all just take a page out of the Ryan Gosling book and just start a little cry fest? I think it's a good sign that we're headed in the right direction as a <laughs> as a as a species if we're able to allow ourselves to bear our emotional hearts. Yeah. <laughs> After bearing our emotional bodies, what's up? Hey. hey. Thank you. Oh, all right. All right, good answer. Can I five for that? Um, no, all right, so I, here's I the question. <laughs> I, I actually love this question because we have two dudes uh, on the panel, and I want to know what you guys mm. think. What are your thoughts on someone who sleeps with you on after the first date, Andy? Um. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What do you, you mean? Like my response, your, or like what's your what are your feelings toward the person you've slept it's with? It's funny. On the first it's like date. when you're 16, it's way different than when you're 26, mm -hmm. and I think that it's like we've all by the time. Probably you're 26. Most people, at least in my circles, have 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 been boning for for a little while, and uh, and so like if we all know that that's where we're going with this, you know, that's one thing. If it is just like oh, it's a one night stand, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not down with the the ONS, you know, so much. But mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what why are you just gonna, or formality? You just want to wait just for the sake of, of waiting? So, I don't know. So you're maybe. in favor of like, but it's not doing like it. it's like, not like I'd be like oh, you have to have sex with me tonight, girl. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's that work. I wouldn't. No, of course not. But it's like that if somebody that sounds like it would work really well. Like it, I think you would she'd be, be surprised. Into it. Yeah. Uh, in West Hollywood, especially, <laughs> crying always happens afterwards, but for different reasons. But so here's the deal. Um, no, it's. I think that you know, if if two people are consenting adults and they want to do it, uh, that's. All, all the power to him, you know. All right, all right, good. I like that do you attitude. Yeah. Or do other do people. Other, yeah. Do other, do the person. Do, do, do yeah. it, do it, all right. Wait, so the question is, what would I think of the Why other Why are you guys person? pretending like you don't know what the question is? <laughs> 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 How are you gonna react to someone who sleeps with you on the first date? Well, I did it too, you know? Like, mm, okay, that okay. takes two to tango, God, so like. Just I'm just so saying, like, how am I supposed salient, to judge soul. someone? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, you're just a good person. So you wouldn't think less of her? No, I uh, honestly, I mean, th if I consented to it as well, I find like, what place do I have to judge that person I for love doing it? it I love it. Wow. This is progress, America. This yeah. is progress. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I <laughs> fall under that same category. Look, I'm a woman, so I think that guys historically have been let off easy for their sexual, sexually devious activities, right? Um, but. I've, I've never thought that it was a big deal. I think that if you're adults and it's consensual and you're having fun, go for it. It's unfortunate that some people will immediately cast the person off as like too easy or whatever. But I do think that the mentality is changing. Robbie just demonstrated that, and I love it. Yeah. Yes. Whoa. So what do you guys think? <laughs> what would you think of someone who sleeps with you immediately? Would you continue seeing that person, or would that turn you off? Would the chase be over and it's no longer exciting? I really do want to hear from you guys. We will use your comments in a video that we do every month where we read the best comments of the month. And uh, yeah, it'll be freaking great. So share in the comment section below. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. A new UK Channel 5 show called Blinging Up Baby features uh, some parents who like to dress their kids up for beauty pageants, and of course, in a lot of cases, they do so in questionable ways. But some parents don't even have their kids in beauty pageants, and they still dress them up in questionable ways. One mother has a four-year-old by the name of Scarlett, and she likes to dress up her little girl in a Hooters outfit. Take a look. My latest outfit's for Scarlett, and I'm working on a Hooters outfit for her, so we'll put together a nice little routine. Next thing is Scarlett. Woo! Although Leanne's chuffed, there's mixed reactions about the controversial choice of outfit. I think the Hooters is a bit inappropriate for a small child. Leanne's gone. I'm going to just today and it's a night out. I saw the Hooters outfit and I thought it was fabulous. You're not going to see many children because that age doesn't stop to me that and I thought it was really good. It's funny because the bias in favour of the British accent is so strong that when she said, I'm going to dress my daughter up in a Hooters outfit, I'm like, Sounds lovely, yeah. right? Yeah. But of course that was terrible, but I want to know what you guys think. Robbie, make your point. I, you know, I don't really understand the pageant thing to begin with. I think, trying to understand it, maybe it's like, oh, wouldn't it be fun if our kids dressed up like adults and wore lots of makeup and hair and stuff like that? But um, it starts to become something different when, <laughs> when it's a Hooters outfit, which kind of, you know, 
When you go to Hooters, you're not like, oh, hot wings. You are very clearly there for... For the boobies. For the boobies. Right. And I think dressing up a four-year-old in a sexualized outfit like that is just outrageous. I, and, I mean, I'm not sure if the mom... She said somewhere in there that, you know, I've never been to Hooters, whatever. So maybe she just had no idea. I mean, she would have to be the most ignorant person on the planet. Well, but she and I'm not be. buying it. I mean, stretch? look at the dance moves. It look was overly mom. sexualizing yeah. a four-year-old, which yes. is perfect for pedophiles out there. Why would you put your kid in that situation? It's disgusting. You know, when you think about it in terms of like who's making a choice, like the woman could certainly go and dress up like a Hooters. Are they bunny? What are they? Hooters? Hooters girls? Girls. Okay, sure. A Hooters girl. A Hooters owl. Ooh. If she if she feels like it, but it's like projecting that sort of decision onto a child who clearly doesn't understand what's going yeah. on and doesn't have the wherewithal to make a decision like that and would never on her own make a decision like that mm -hmm. is is so wrong and just uncomfortable. I mean, this this mom. Parents who do this stuff are probably, I don't know, maybe one or two degrees uh, above like people who lock their kids in hot cars, you know? I mean, they're just, they're terrible. And I think that in some cases they're living vicariously through their kids and it's sick. They wish that they were celebrities. They wish that they were, you know, desired. But just understand, look, I came off very, very harsh in my commentary, but it's because it upsets me. We have like this crazy environment and this crazy situation where we're putting these kids in danger. We are putting them in danger. Absolutely. Who do you think likes to do the judging in these pageants? I mean, if you Earth. if you see like a middle-aged <laughs> dude judging pageants where a four-year-old is gyrating on a stage wearing a Hooters outfit, there's something wrong there. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. I um, think, yeah, I ahead. think it's one thing if the kid wanted to go up there and perform right. and all that, but it, uh, most of the time it's these parents that are saying like, hey, wouldn't it be fun to be in a Hooters outfit? And the kid goes, okay. And they were, you they know, don't they know don't know Because it's your God on. when you're four years old. Yeah. You can't make a decision, so. So here's the question for the story. Andy, let me start with you. Do you prefer girls who dress in revealing clothes or girls who dress more uh, conservatively? I prefer girls who, who uh, dress like they want to dress. Thank you. Thank you. Drop Boom. Spike. There Robbie. you go. Yeah, I, I was going to say, typically I date girls that dress more conservatively, but yeah, girls dress how you want to dress, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reflection of who you are, who you want to come across as, and so just be you. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. You brainwashed us all. Look. <laughs> I Congratulations. Love I love it. Well, you guys know how I feel. I like to dress the way I want to dress. One of the things that I love about TYT is Jake has never told me, like, you can't wear this, you should wear that. He stays out of it, and that is a great situation. It's hard to find that in the media. A lot of times, um, higher-ups will you tell you about? that you need to look a certain way. Um, but if I were to flip this around when it comes to men, I'm noticing that men are starting to dress a little more uh, sexy. They're wearing the tighter pants and like the tighter shirt. Do you shirt. object? Hell we're just getting fatter. No. It's not about us wearing tighter clothes. It's just we're on exercise. We're getting fatter. I like That's the dudes it. in the skinny jeans. You I'm do. into it. Yeah. Oh yeah, especially when they they got that figure going on. <laughs> Anyways, what do you guys think? Do you prefer a significant other or a person you're dating to dress more conservatively, or would you rather have them dress a little more sexy? But I think the more important thing you can comment on in this story is what you think about these pageants and what you think about the parents that put these four-year-olds in these situations. Share your thoughts below. Let me know if you think that I went too far. I'm totally open to that <laughs> criticism. We'll read your comments, and of course, we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. A 17-year-old unfortunately died and was the second person to die at the Mad Decent Block Party. It's an electronic dance music festival at the Meriwether Post Pavilion in Virginia. Now, of course, this is a terrible, tragic story. According to police, there were about 20 people that were hospitalized with illnesses and of course it was because, or they suspect it was because of drug use. While authorities are still waiting for toxicology results, police often think that this is the result of taking Molly, which is supposed to be a pure form of MDMA, but oftentimes that's not the case. We will give you all of the details as to why that's not the case. Um, but we do have a source, Boston University, that kind of laid it out for us. Let's read the facts and then we'll uh, kind of break it down for you further. So, according to Boston University, MDMA is man-made. It does not come from a plant like marijuana or tobacco. Other chemicals or substances, such as caffeine, amphetamines, PCP, or cocaine, are sometimes added to or even substituted for MDMA in ecstasy or molly tablets. Makers of MDMA can add anything they want to the drug, so its purity is always in question. And before we go to our panelists, I do really want to specify and, and elaborate on that last point. 
there has been this complete rebranding of ecstasy, right? And ecstasy was linked to all these deaths at these rave parties. Of course, there was a lot of fear mongering in the media about ecstasy, even though when you look at the numbers, uh, overdoses when it comes to ecstasy is not crazy compared to overdoses when it comes to other drugs like cocaine or heroin. Um, but one thing that I do want to say is calling it Molly does not mean that it's magically pure all of a sudden. Molly is still the exact same thing. It's still ecstasy. It's still cut. And the reason why is because we have a market that is not regulated. The reason why it's not regulated is because it's not legal. So if it's illegal, it creates this great environment for drug dealers to rebrand, remarket, and sell you shit pretending as if it's pure when it's not pure at all. There are drug testing kits out there, so if you do want to do MDMA, if you do want to experiment with it, please, for the love of God, be responsible, research the hell out of it before you do it, buy those testing kits, test it to make sure it is pure, and be as responsible as you possibly can. But I'm calling on the government to be smart when it comes to policy, and please, legalize it, regulate it, and make sure that these deaths don't happen. Let me open it up to the panelists. Um, Andy, let me start off with you and make your point. I think anytime you put an illicit, that's kind of an interesting word there, a substance into your body and it's something that doesn't have an FDA approval on it and it's uh, you know going to change the way that your body chemistry is, I think you take an inherent risk and I think you, it's your responsibility to know that when you do that, something could happen. Mm -hmm. um, I have a hard time like with a lot of sympathy for people who end up kind of screwed up because it's like not like it was Ebola and Donald Trump gave it to you, you know? I mean, it's 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 your responsibility. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, Robbie? Uh, you know, I think the only reason why this is in the news is because there's a war to be fought over it. And I think it's um, you know, the, the, these kids overdosed from the drug, but, and so everyone's jumping on, oh, this drug is super dangerous. If you want to know how dangerous a drug actually is, there's things called scientific study and like, you know, an actual analysis that don't involve other factors such as other drugs being cut into mm -hmm. the drug that these kids were taking. So I think if you actually want to know how bad this drug is, this is not the way to do that. Right. Um, and I, I think it's, honestly, I think it's, um, Bad. I just I <laughs> look. Know, to, look, to I, I, I'm not saying people should go out there and do a bunch of drugs, but I definitely am saying that the government should legalize drugs because when you do that, it creates a safer environment for people who are going to do the drug anyway. So I would much rather live in a world where I know that the person that I love, or a person that I care about, person in my life, went ahead and got it from, let's say, some sort of government building where they, they sell the drug or whatever. Planned Parenthood. I, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> Planned Parenthood. The Republicans would love that. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just feel like we could go towards smart policy, but unfortunately you know what the risks so many are going people, into it. yes, so many people are making so much money off keeping drugs like this illegal. And if you are genuine and sincere about wanting to keep these people safe, you would regulate it. You would make sure that there are no drug dealers who push these drugs only government officials or only people who are professionals and the drug is regulated. All right, so the question for this story is, would you ever risk your health in order to have a good time? Have you risked your health in order to have a good time? I'll start with you, Robbie. So I'm actually 20, so I can't publicly drink in bars and things like that. Oh, yeah, so, so you know, yeah, okay, good kid, whatever, let's get that out of the way. Um, but you know, uh, so I mean, there's not a lot of substances that I've done that would dramatically risk my health. Um, but uh, as far as like, I don't know, everyone needs a little bit of risk every now and then to have a good time. I will go, you know, bungee jumping if I want, you know, and I'm not afraid to go do that. Even though there are risks, you know, you sign a waiver, whatever, you go and do it. I think that's a very human thing, right. is to do something that might endanger you a little bit, but it's that danger that kind of makes you feel more alive. A little adrenaline rush. Right, exactly. And it's, it's natural to try to suppress that, I think, is sometimes when you go overboard and you set yourself on fire, or, you know, <laughs> something else. All right, all right, good reference to the, no the one fire videos. No would ever videos. do that, right? <laughs> and, and yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, I have a control issue. Uh -huh. Like, I don't like to, you know, be out of control. So, I mean, I, I, I drink every once in a while, you know. Um, but as far as, like, you know, things that people do, uh, yeah, absolutely. People drive fast cars. You know, they drive them dangerously. I have done that before. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I think that you know that's a part of a part of living is being able to sort of push the envelope of your comfort zone, whether that means doing something dangerous, you know, that threatens your life, or just doing something that's maybe a little bit out of your own yeah. existence, you know? So I think it's okay. 
again, it's like whoever, you know, if you if you do it, just know that there's a risk associated with it. You know, if you set yourself on fire, shit, you're gonna get burned. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, Asshole. absolutely. Well, to answer my own question, I think anytime you go out there and you really party hard and you're binge drinking, you put your life in danger, yeah. right? There's so many people who get, who get alcohol poisoning, mm. which always, makes me laugh is a weird way of putting it, but it does make me laugh because alcohol is totally legal. As long as you're 21, you can get it. You can drink as much of it as you want, but you can't smoke marijuana, which has killed how many people? Um, zero. Okay, but anyway, um, you know, when it comes to alcohol, like I, I have one specific story that I can tell. For my graduation party, I graduated with my master's degree. I was super excited. I'm like, yes, I'm officially done with school. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go get a PhD, but it doesn't matter. Like, my master's is over. I'm going to party hard. And um, every time a guest showed up to the hall where we were having this big party, I would have a shot of vodka with them. Oh. And in between, I was an idiot and I kept drinking red wine. And before I knew it, I was so incredibly sick. I'm surprised that I didn't get alcohol poisoning that night. I got so sick that my friend was grabbing my hair as I was running to the women's bathroom. And the second I opened it, there was this poor woman standing by the sink washing oh. her hands. And I projectile vomited on her. No. It was the worst, the worst situation. And look, so people, I know, people yeah. get behind the wheel when they're that drunk. People risk their lives. They, they do things that are risky. So. I'm just saying, we do put ourselves in more risk than we really realize. But share your stories. Maybe you have a more salacious story that you'd like to share. Do so in the comments section below. We'll see you guys soon. And uh, have a freaking awesome one. Just remember that we do read your comments. We definitely do pick certain comments for our video at the end of the month. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. I certainly enjoyed doing it and talking to you guys. You're freaking great. And I want to give the audience an opportunity to know where to find you. So Robbie, let me start with you. Great. Uh, you can find me on Ray William Johnson's channel. Uh, I am the new host of Equals 3. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Robbie Mott. Uh, on Instagram, uh, at Robbie.B.Mott. It's a little bit more complicated. Wow. And on Facebook, I have a little fan page. It is titled, Robbie Mott. So, Whoa, uh, yeah, I know, right? I got really creative with those. So. Nice. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. It was thank a blast. you for having me. Andy, you came back on the show. You earned my respect. Oh, thank you. And I want our audience to also uh, respect not a chance. you and watch Absolutely your stuff. Not. So uh, tell them. I'm Andy Reesmeyer. I'm the host of Dweebcast on Aura.tv. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at Dweebcast and follow me on Twitter at Andy Reesmeyer. That's about it. It's all I got. I love it. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Anna Kasparian. You can check me out Monday through Friday on theyoungturks.com or youtube.com slash theyoungturks. We actually stream live Monday through Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you watch that. Go ahead and join the chat room where people say really, really terrible things about me. It could be a lot of fun. You could either join in or you could defend me, whatever you want to do. And of course, we'll see you guys next week with another episode of The Point.